Um, so, I don't know how to start this video. Um, I guess I'll say like who I am. Um, my name's Erica Harlager and I'm one of Martin and Mariana's friends. Um, I'm a voice actress in Los Angeles and um, yeah, that's who I am. That was really quick. I, I'm obviously not prepared for this video. Um, but uh, they asked me to do a We're Still Here video and I thought that was a really cool idea because um, I've watched a lot of Martin's We're Still Here videos and they've really helped me um, as someone who's uh, been going through depression uh, over the past couple years and like anxiety and stuff and um, who is close to a lot of people going through that too. Um, and so I'm really honored to be a part of the series and I think that it's so brave of Martin to do a series like this. Um, so hopefully I, I do it justice. <laughs> Martin always starts out by talking about something that's good, something good in his life. And I was trying to think of something for me, um, and I was like, well, voice acting is like so cliche, because like that's my job, so I feel like any of their other friends that are voice actors that do this or might be like, oh, voice acting. But then I decided to do it anyway, because um, that's really the thing that ha that's where I'm happiest is when I'm when I'm working and on weeks when I don't have work when I don't have voice acting work I I, I do a lot worse um, I go to therapy every single week and um, my therapist knows when I haven't been working that week because she's like oh you seem you seem down this week have you not had work this week and I'm like no she's like I knew it um, and it's really interesting because I'm really an introvert, like really, really, really introverted. Um, I get really nervous talking to people I don't know. I hate calling people on the phone. It's like, that's like, don't take me to a haunted house. Tell me to call someone on the phone and it'll be like my worst nightmare. Um, and for some reason, I decided that I liked acting. Um, when I was on stage, all of that anxiety I would have, which I'm just kind of a naturally anxious person and I've been diagnosed with anxiety disorders, um, all that kind of went away. Uh, I'd be really nervous right before and then after I'd be like, oh my god, did I just do that? But when I was on stage or like acting of any kind, it would just kind of, I don't know, I'd enter this kind of happy, just like weird alternate state where I'm confident and uh, everything feels good. Anything bad that's happening in my life is just like out the window. Even if I'm using some of that for like an emotional scene, it's still like, I, I still feel just so much better when I'm like on. Um, and I guess that's kind of, that's kind of normal for actors. Um, a lot of them, I guess, are, are introverted. And then, you know, like, like Robin Williams, he was really, apparently really, really introverted. Um, unless he was like on and acting and then he was like really uh, obviously very funny and personable and and obviously he was dealing with a lot of demons too that nobody ever knew about because he was on and he was acting um, and yeah I, I, I really really love it I guess I should talk about I still remember like the very first the very first time I got in the booth um, for those of you who are watching who like aren't familiar with what voice acting is, it's like, um, I, I do a lot of recording for like the English dubs of anime and like uh, video games and, and cartoons and stuff like that. And usually with that you're in a booth by yourself and the director's like in an adjoining room, sometimes with a window, sometimes there's no window and you're just totally alone and you hear a voice from nowhere that's like, okay, do this, and you're like, okay. Um, so. When I first was going to go in the booth for the first time, I was taking a class with Tony Oliver. Um, I was taking his Adventures in Voice Acting workshop. And times have really changed, because back then it was just me and one other person. Now if you try to sign up for those workshops, they go like lightning fast and they're totally full with like 
I don't know, 12 people or whatever the maximum is. But back then it was just me and one other guy. And so he, Tony spent the first part of the day kind of talking a little about acting. And I'd, I'd done acting growing up, but never as like, never like, oh, theater. I was always like, it was a hobby. So I did like competitive public speaking and like uh, funny little skits and stuff. Um, and I always thought it was really fun, but I never really thought of it as a career. Uh, and then I decided, I went to Anime Expo and was like, this looks like fun. Uh, so I went to the class and I was really, really nervous to get in that booth because it seemed very like, first of all, I was meeting two new people, the other guy in the class and Tony. And I was like, ah, I'm so nervous. I like, I'm nervous around new people and like, ah. Um, and then I was going to have to like act in front of them. And I was like, I'd never, I've never really had any like acting classes. Like I, I trained for the competitive public speaking stuff. I did like speech and debate in high school, high school and like mock trial. Um, but you know, I'd never really had like acting classes. Uh, and I did a lot of improv in high school too. Um, so I was really, really nervous. And I think I went first out of the two of us. Um, it was, it was like four or five years ago or maybe six years ago now. So it was a little hazy. Um, but I think I went first. So I went into the studio, you know, the engineer, I put on my little headphones and the engineer comes and he like sets up the mic. And I remember I had my hair was like, you know, I was like 18, 19. And so the cool style was like, I had like my hair in front of half my face and I was like, oh, I'm so edgy and cool. Um, and I remember the engineer made a, made a comment. He was like, can you see the screen? Ha ha ha. And I was like, yeah, I can see it. Like, I totally didn't get what he was saying. And then he left and I was like, oh, he was making a joke. Oh, I did. Uh, oh, I'm so awkward. I didn't. Uh. <laughs> um, so right off the bat, I was like, ah, a bundle of nerves. Um, and he closed the door. He closed me in. I was all by myself. There was like a window where I could see the director and the engineer and the one other guy in class. Um, and I hear Tony's voice in my headphones and he's like, okay, we're going to get started. And I remember as soon as I opened my mouth to start saying that first line, everything I was feeling, like all my nerves and anxiety and like the pressure totally went away. And it was the strangest feeling. Like that's how I was in, in speech and debate and like mock trial too, which is why I kept doing those things. But this was like a very, since I was alone in the room, it was a very, I don't know, it's hard to describe how kind of peaceful it was. Um, and it was just like something in my mind, I was like, oh, this is, this is right, I need this. Um, like, I, I need to do this. Um, and ever since then, you know, I, I, Tony was like, you should change your major to theater. And I was like, okay, yeah, because I want to do this. Um, so I did, and I kept working, and now, and now I work a lot. And it's always the same. Every time I go in, I could have something horrible happening in my life. Um, but when I go into that studio, everything kind of falls away. And there are a lot of uh, times when, over the past couple years where I've really felt like voice acting has really saved me. Um, and I said that in an interview with somebody else. I don't think the inter interview's out yet. I don't know when this is gonna go on YouTube, but whatever. Um, and that sounds really dramatic, but if I hadn't have had voice acting, like if I feel like I've ha if I'd had just like a no normal job, um, I don't know how I would have made it through the past couple years. Um, it's been very, very therapeutic, and um, I just I feel so lucky to be able to to do something that gives me so much like joy and in peace, I guess. Um, again, it's really hard to explain. I don't know if I'm explaining exactly what it feels like for me to go in there. Um, but it's very odd. My therapist doesn't understand. She's like, how can you, like, someone so anxious and so, like, nervous about all these other things, you're the last person I'd expect to be an actor. And I'm like, I know. I don't know. I don't know. Something happens when I go in there. And, and now when I do, like, when I go to conventions and I do appearances, it's the same thing. Like when, when fans come up normally, I would, I would be like really nervous and really like, I don't know how to talk to people. But there's something about being in like that acting zone 
um, where it just makes it really easy and, and uh, it's really exciting and fun. And then, and then later when I go back to the hotel room, I'm like, oh my God, what did I, I did that. I talked to people. It was scary. Um, but yeah, so voice acting's good. So for the second part of the video, I know Martin always talks about something he's struggled with. And, um, it took me a couple weeks to figure out what I was gonna really do for this video. Um, because I've had a hard few years. Um, I've had a lot of things happen and I wasn't, I wasn't really sure. First of all, I was like, well, I have so many options. <laughs> but second of all, I was like, I'm, they're all kind of, even the ones that happened like five, four or five years ago, I'm still only just barely starting to deal with them. I, I buried them for a very long time. Um, and that was bad. And that's actually what uh, I'm going to talk about, which is being overwhelmed. Um, and I, I kind of pretended that a lot of bad things that had happened didn't happen. And I was like, well, if I just pretend, then like it didn't happen and everything's fine. And yeah. Um, and then one day I like all of a sudden I just like couldn't get out of bed. And I basically had like a mental breakdown. This was like a year and a half ago or something. Um, and I, I live with my boyfriend, uh, we've been dating for almost four years and we had moved in pretty recently, like a few months earlier. And I just, I called my mom and I was like, I think I called her in like the middle of the night. And I was like, I, I need you to come get me and I need to come home. And it wasn't anything against my boyfriend. I loved living with him and living with him made things a lot better. But one day, I just had one too many things pile up and I just couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. And I was like, I need, I need support. I need help. I was like, I was at the point where I was, I was looking up if I could check myself into a hospital, um, and be like, I'm, I feel like I'm in danger of like, I don't know. I don't know if like doing something, I don't want to go that far, but I wanted, I wanted to like be checked into a hospital and just be like taken care of for a few days. Cause I felt so just like something was very wrong. Um, it was just that I, I allowed myself to get way too overwhelmed. There's a plane outside. You can probably hear it. Um, and, uh, and I, I just kind of overloaded and short circuited. And then, uh, yeah, so my mom brought me home and, um, I hadn't told her, I hadn't told anyone anything that had been going on. Um, so basically for some perspective. Uh, over the last five years, I, some of the things I, I dealt with were um, I was sexually assaulted on my college campus, um, which made going to class really hard. Uh, I'm still finishing my degree, actually, and that's part of the reason why, because it was just really hard for me to keep going to classes. Um, another reason is because I've I, now, I, now I have a career and I've been working a lot, so it makes it uh, harder to make time to go to class. But um, other than that, I, I was also very severely uh, bullied online for a while. Um, I didn't even realize what was happening until it was like a couple months in. Actually, until it was like that tie was broken with the bully and I, I, real, I looked back and I was like, oh, that was, that was bad. Like, that was really bad. Um, so I had those things going on um, and my parents had recently told me that they were going to get a divorce. Um, there was some infidelity on my dad's side. Um, and that was really hard. I've always been like a daddy's girl. Like, um, he and I were really, really close. And that was just like, I couldn't comprehend that. It was like, it was like he died and there was like this new person. And I was like, who are you? Like this, you're not the dad that I knew. And like, and he was like dating a new person already. And <laughs> Um, so there are all these things going on and, um, so yeah, I, I, I told my mom, I was like, I think I want to see a therapist, um, which I'd seen therapists in high school and I hated it. I hated it so much. I thought, I, I don't know. I just, I, something about them. I don't think they were the right fit for me. They, they seemed very like condescending. I'm sure that they weren't being condescending, but in my high school mind, I was like, this is no. I don't like these people. I don't want to go. So I would just kind of stop going. And, um, that was bad. Cause then 
they were like, where are you? And my mom was like, why didn't you go? And I was like, I don't know. I'm, I don't want to talk to strangers. Um, but so we found me a therapist and she specializes in cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, and she's been really, really good. Uh, it's been really helpful. Uh, and she's kind of helped me, you know, start dealing with things one at a time. It's, it's a very slow process, but um, I've gotten, like, much better since seeing her. Although then, like, a few months after I started seeing her, um, I lost someone very important in my life to suicide. Um, and we're still dealing with that. Um, every day is, is really hard. Um, for someone who's been left left behind, one of the people that, you know, is in that wake. I think it's hard. Sometimes people who are going through major depression, um, you know, they think nobody cares about them. Uh, nobody, nobody would care if they were gone. Um, but that's not true. That's, it's not true. I've seen what happens to the people left behind. Um, and it's, it's ugly. It's really painful. Um, and so that's, it's, it's been so, it's so overwhelming. There are, there are days still, even today, um, I mean, not today, today, like this week, um, there are, there are days when I'll just, I'll just be like, I don't want to get out of bed. I just want to keep sleeping. Cause that's like my, my coping mechanism when things get overwhelming. I'm like, well, I'll just go back to sleep because when I'm asleep, then, you know, nothing bad has happened and I can just hang out with everybody in my head and, you know, everything's great. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh, it's the real world again. That's kind of a bummer. Um, so, and that's bad. That's, that's what happens to me when I get overloaded. I just, my defense mechanism is go to sleep. <laughs> um, and I feel like, I feel like I'm like a possum. It's like, play dead. <laughs> um, but that's, that's bad. It's not healthy to do that. Obviously you missed out on like a lot. I've missed out on a lot of things. Um, I missed out on hanging with my friends and, and, um, just like getting things done during the day or like the day will go by and I'll be like, oh, I had such plans to do such, you know, adult things or like fun things and, and then nothing gets done. And then like, that makes it even more overwhelming. And then the next day you're like, oh, I'm well, now more overwhelmed because I didn't do things from yesterday. So then I'll go back to sleep again. And it's like a vicious cycle. So it's bad. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, the, the best thing I've, been able to do is is talk to talk to somebody a professional in therapy and um she's she's been really helpful and uh helped me create like a schedule um and helped identify the things that make me happy which you know is like voice acting or like hanging out with people I care about and and um doing creative things uh is really good for me um but yeah if I if I could go back I would definitely not try to pretend things didn't happen because then more things happen and then you're like, oh no, all these things happened and now it feels like they all happened at the same time. Um, and that gets really hard. Like I, I understand how people get so um, overwhelmed that they feel like there's no way out. Um, and that's, you know, as someone who's been left behind by somebody who who did um, feel that way obviously um, it's yeah I don't know it's bad obviously it's it's really hard um, I wish that I could um, tell talk to people who were who were thinking about uh, committing suicide and and just kind of explain to them like what it's like for for the people they leave behind um, it's really hard <laughs> um, I don't know what else to talk about really I got all cry and stuff so that's a bummer sorry about that <laughs> um, but yeah I mean the important thing you need to remember is is to just just keep going and and find that thing that you really love. There are some days when some weeks when I'm, I'm having a bad week and I have to go in to record for a job 
and before I go in, I'm like, I don't know if I can do it. Like, I, I just don't feel, I don't have the energy. I, I can't go. But I drag myself there, and once I'm there, and I get in that booth, then like everything kind of goes away. And they pay you to yell and scream and cry. And it's great, it's awesome. Cause you know, if I started like yelling and screaming and crying like anywhere else, people would be like knocking on my door and being like, are you dying? Like we called the police. And, um, and that's also, that adds some anxiety, you know? Um, so it's been really, really, really awesome to have that in my life. Um, and again, I, I feel like voice acting really has saved me. Um, and I, I hope that I get to continue to do it for a very long time. Um, and whatever else comes my way, which please no more for a while, please. But um, whatever other hardships come my way, I, I am, I feel like I, I now, I now know that I need to, I need to deal with them. I need to face them head on not hide from them and not pretend that they don't exist because that just makes everything so much worse. Um, I know everyone's always like, you should talk to somebody, but really, you should talk to somebody. Um, as someone who did not talk to anybody about any of these things for a really long time, I think only like two people in the whole world knew about the assault and it wasn't anyone who could help me do anything, you know, like obviously my, my friends that I told helped me, but it wasn't anyone, I, I regret um, not kind of telling anyone of authority, but I was, I was really scared. And that's, that's, for, that's for another time. But um, yeah, you just, you just have to, you have to talk to somebody. It's hard, it's really, really, really hard to open up and be that vulnerable. And I, that's why I am so proud of Martin for doing these videos, um, even, even like, this has, this has been really like helpful to talk to the camera, but um, I, he goes into such detail about the things he's been going through and, and that's really difficult um, to trust so many people, all of the people that watch these videos out there with that information and, and that's really good. You need to, you need to, even if it's just, you know, talking to the camera and then putting the video online, that's like, talking to somebody at least. It's, it's getting it out there into the universe. You're not keeping it all inside. Um, and that's very, very important. <laughs> Just know that you guys are all important and everybody goes through stuff. People you don't even realize are going through anything, they have their stuff. Um, and it's all about finding finding something that helps you move forward. and helps you, helps you feel okay. Um, and once you find that thing, that thing is out there. So just keep looking for it if you haven't found it yet. And once you find that thing, it, it really, it changes everything. And um, it changes it for the better. Um, and, and find people that, that you, you trust and, and care about. And, and I, would, I wouldn't be where I am today without my boyfriend and my family and my friends as my support. Um, and, trust them and, and trust yourself to talk to them and, and bring all these things up and just try, don't try to take on the world alone. It's, it's really hard and it's not something that I would wish on anyone. You, even if you think you're all alone, I promise you, you're not. There's somebody out there who's, who will cry for a year, years, multiple, their whole life if, if you were gone. Um, so just keep that in mind. Thanks.